Celebrations. A source close to Melania told Hill exclusively that she's taking Donald's side on this. With the government shutdown in full swing with no signs of ending Senator Chuck Schumer admitted on December 22 that both sides of the aisle were still very far apart, Melania Trump is trying to keep spirits high. A source close to the First Lady told Hollywood Life exclusively that she somehow feels that her husband Donald Trump is somehow blameless in his obstinate persistence with gaining funding to build his wall. Melania is determined to not let the government shutdown affect their Christmas celebration at Mar-a-Lago, even though it has already delayed things with Donald having to stay behind in Washington, our source said. Melania subscribes to Donald's belief, though that it's all down to the Democrats' unwillingness to budge, and that the blame lays firmly with them. When it comes down to it, Melania feels remorseful for all the governmental employees out of work, but she won't budge in terms of her belief that Donald is not at fault. Of course, Melania feels terrible for the federal employees that will have to go without pay over the holidays. But she doesn't see why her and Donald should be held accountable for something she believes isn't their fault, our source went on to say. The way Melania sees it Donald is doing everything in his power to keep the country safe. And it's crazy that anybody would have an issue with that, our source added. We'll keep you posted with all of the latest news about Melania and Donald. In the meantime, check out all of their latest photos together in our gallery above. The government shutdown may be the nation's nightmare before Christmas, but Santa Claus will still be on his way. The North American Aerospace Defense Command NARAD, which is funded by the federal government, announced on Friday that it will still track Santa's flight across the globe, despite the freeze on its funds. NARAD said they'll continue the tradition of tracking Santa just as it has done for the past six decades. First Lady Melania Trump who flew to the Trump's Moralago estate in Palm Beach, Florida on Friday, said she will also continue her annual tradition of calling into NARAD on Christmas Eve and spreading holiday cheer. In the event of a government shutdown, NARAD will continue with its 63-year tradition of NARAD tracks Santa on December 24, the agency said. Military personnel who conduct NERAD tracks Santa are supported by approximately 1,500 volunteers who make the program possible each and every year, NERAD added. Children call into NERAD on Christmas Eve to ask about Santa's whereabouts and this year Melania will help answer the calls and share updates on where old Saint Nick is around the globe. Last year, Melania and President Trump took calls 9 and 6 calls respectively from the grandeur of their Moralago estate on Christmas Eve. The federal government shut down on Friday at midnight after Democrats rejected President Donald Trump's proposed 5.7 billion border wall bill. On Saturday Congress and the President tried to come to a negotiation, but to no avail, and the Senate was adjourned until Thursday December 27 keeping the government shut down through the remainder of the week. In the shutdown 420,000 Americans will be forced to work without pay over the holidays and 380,000 federal employees will be furloughed. However the U.S. Postal Service will still be running and continue to send Christmas gifts to families across the nation. All post offices will remain open for business. Because we are an independent entity that is funded through the sale of our products services, and not by tax dollars, our services will not be impacted by a government shutdown, the service tweeted. Melania Trump's cranberry topiary trees may have left some of her critics seeing red, but they turned out to be a Christmas hit one of several new ideas the Trumps introduced this holiday season. In a four-week stretch of 21 holiday parties, the president also did fewer official photo ops and largely froze out the media. But in Tim O'Honor tradition, though, politicos still used the celebrations to squeeze in some last-minute dealmaking. 
Many of the soirees unfolded under the threat of a partial government shutdown that took effect Saturday. A stalemate with Congress over Trump's demand for $5 billion to build a wall on the U.S. Mexico border forced the president to delay his plan to shift the merrymaking to his Florida state on Friday. He remained in Washington while his wife and son, Baron, flew to Palm Beach without him. The red trees featured on a green carpet along the East Wing colonnade turned out to be quite the attraction pedestrian traffic jams formed as Trump's many party guests clamored to be photographed in front of the unusual holiday landscape. Every single person that came through the East Wing stopped for a photo, said conservative commentator Paris Denard, a recent guest. Armstrong Williams, another conservative commentator, tweeted photos of himself posing along the tree-lined hallway during a reception. I thought it was just classy, he said. Great for photos. Trump and the First Lady on Wednesday hosted the final two parties of the season, where guests feasted on lamb chops, shrimp and potato latkes along with a dessert bar that included lemon tart, coconut cake and Christmas cookies. Champagne and eggnog flowed freely. Guests said the affairs amounted to festive reunions largely devoid of overt political talk while folks who'd been out of touch spent time catching up. Sebastian Gorka, a former Trump national security aide, called the atmosphere a true celebration of America's Judeo-Christian heritage and our oldest traditions. He added via email that guests talked about how good it is to have the White House occupied by a man and woman who love this country and the importance for conservatives to be happy warriors as President Reagan told us. Having a great time at the White House CQ Christmas party. Said the caption former White House Chief of Staff Reince Priebus added to a photo he tweeted of himself and outgoing Chief of Staff John Kelly. Kelly succeeded Priebus just six months into the new administration. Now Kelly is set to depart at the end of December after a top sitter of the 18-month stint as Oval Office gatekeeper. Other notables who attended include $6 million man Lee Majors, Trump supporters Diamond and Silk and professional soccer player Wayne Rooney. Largely absent from the festivities this year was the traditional opportunity for guests to have a picture taken with Trump and his wife a timmy-consuming process that requires the president and first lady to stand for hours, grinning, posing and making small talk with hundreds of guests, some of whom they hardly know. Trump retained the photo tradition for members of the U.S. Secret Service, law enforcement and the military, as well as staff who work in the residence, according to a White House official who declined to be identified discussing details of the private receptions. Except for a pair of Hanukkah receptions in the East Room, many of the holiday receptions took place in the Grand Foyer, the open area on the state floor across from the Blue Room. The parties had a certain rhythm a tuxedo-clad Trump and the First Lady, who has worn a variety of white, black and green gowns, descended the red carpeted staircase hand in hand from their second-floor residence. Trump made roughly ten minutes of welcoming remarks before inviting his wife to speak. They then mingled and posed for some informal photos before going back upstairs. Williams said he saw warmth between the couple. You watch that body language. She was really happy. And she was really happy to be with him, Williams said, adding that the president's remarks were upbeat. The parties also offered job-searching opportunities for some of those on the hunt. Trump, for example needs to find a new interior secretary and he's got a class of soon-to-up unemployed members of Congress to choose from if he wants. Representative Jeff Denham, Recalif, who lost his re-election, is one such member said to be interested in the job. Denham attended Saturday's congressional ball at the White House. Left off the holiday schedule was the annual party for the White House press corps. Trump's sour relations with journalists who cover him and the administration peaked last month after the White House revoked a CNN correspondent's press pass. But the White House quickly reinstated the pass after a federal judge ordered it. As an alternative, the White House said it has been arranging tours for reporters and their families.